This is how I created what would have been a $40,000 pond for less than eight grand. So when we moved into our house, there was this huge, just weed filled hole in the front yard where the previous owners had tried to build a pond, but they did not do it the right way. They used really cheap pond liner. Uh, they did not use any kind of underlayment underneath or above the, the liner. Uh, it, it, it had rocks everywhere. It was just a nasty, gnarly mess. And so we could either pay to bring a bunch of soil in and fill the pond and, and just have a flat piece of ground or start getting busy digging out the pond and creating a pond. So that's what we did. We started to excavate the pond out there was a lot of soil that had sloughed off and just dirt that had blown in over the years. Um, and we really had to dig past several feet of dirt just to get to where the pond liner that was full of holes were. So that took a, a decent amount of time, but we did all the excavation ourselves, digging out the sides um, and, uh, and really shaping what we wanted the pond to look like with the hourglass shape that you'll see at the end. Um, during this, I was doing a lot of research online and, uh, a lot of my inspiration came from these swimming ponds that they create over in the UK, uh, that have uh, a lot of natural filtration to them, um, and do not need a lot of chemicals, uh, or anything like that. And I liked that idea. I liked the idea of not having chemicals, having it be a natural uh, pond that utilized um, microbacteria and mechanical filtration rather than dumping a lot of chemicals in there because we intended on swimming in the pond quite a bit. And so you can see here um, several different design ideas that I've uh, researched. Ultimately, I decided on um, a pond skimmer that fed into a UV um, filter uh, clarifier uh, and then into a uh, biofilter falls. And uh, so as, as you can see here, we start building out the walls. Um, after the walls are built, then comes in, um, and, and we really kind of probably overdid it when it came to the pond liner and the underlayment. I went with 60 mil EPDM pond liner, which is like the heaviest commercial grade pond liner that you can get. We installed that over top of a heavy mesh pond um, underlayment, um, and then... <clears throat> we put another layer of that underlayment over top of the EPDM liner um, in between the liner and the gravel that we eventually put into the pond to protect that liner both from any sharp objects, rocks that were going to be on there, as well as from the sun. You can see here as we start to uh, put gravel and water into the pond, uh, it's really starting to come together here um, and take shape for us. Um, we really wanted it to be something that would last a long time. We're thrilled with the results as we, you know, really started to get it up and running and then started working on getting, um, not only the filtration really kind of dialed in where it was working really well, but then also getting all the landscaping around the edges. And we are just thrilled with how this pond came out. Um, the kids love swimming in it. Uh, we've got the swim section in the middle that's eight feet wide by 40 feet long. Um, it's great to sit out uh, at sunset and, and just enjoy the Colorado uh, weather. So, guys, this is how we took uh, this pond from a hole in the front yard into an amazing, awesome um, swim pond for us. So, uh, guys, please like and subscribe uh, for more content.